Free Minds TV is on location in Concord, New Hampshire, where the Ron Paul campaign is opening their headquarters for the 2012 Republican primary campaign. And it's, uh, it's already looks like there are quite a few people who've arrived, and we saw cars pulling in one after the other as we were getting here well ahead of the speech. So obviously going to be a very large crowd. I'll be interested to see just how many people show up. And hopefully there'll be a good speech by Ron Paul, who's scheduled to speak sometime around 7. So we understand the government's spending much, too much, it's gotten too big. And that's in New Hampshire, but at the federal level, it's completely out of control. We have to turn this thing around. We have to turn this thing around now. And there's only one man I trust to do that, and that's Congressman Ron Paul. So I'd like you to please welcome a top-tier candidate. The only top tier candidate in my mind. He did great in Ames, nearly first place finish, and we're going to win New Hampshire. Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you very much. Is, is my mic working? It is. Okay. You know, I periodically go to uh, campaign headquarter openings, you know, here and there, and they always say, well, come to the headquarters, the volunteers are going to be there. So I always expect at least 30 or 40 people. <laughs> so when I was driving up, I was rather impressed, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, this is a wonderful thing, you know. We, we did have that rough and tumble uh, on the media on the weekend, but uh, I think this has made up for it. <laughs> reported the media coverage on Sunday morning was uh, less than less than perfect for us and then there were we, we had a pretty good interview scheduled for mon Monday morning and I thought well and then uh, right right before we were supposed to go on or the evening before that they called and I said you've been canceled <laughs> so uh, I, I didn't know exactly what was going on but you, you know generally uh, if you stick to your guns and keep and you're persistent things work out for, you know, in, in the best manner. And I would say that in the last two days we've sort of made up because the issue has become the fact that I did not get any interviews on Sunday morning. And uh, this, then there's this guy on uh, com uh, Comedy Central or something. I don't know. His name, his name is John Stewart. I think I I think I, I think I've been on his program once or twice, and I think he's uh, thinking about getting me on again. <laughs> but you know what? I think that is a perfect example because you know if we took all of his beliefs and all of our beliefs, I'll bet we'd have a few disagreements. You know, <laughs> but but isn't it wonderful that somebody like that comes to defend us because he's an honest person? He wants the truth. And when we do agree, he lets people know. So this is why I believe the message of liberty really does bring people together. And uh, that is also the reason I, why I'm so encouraged. Uh, because, you know, at times I've been criticized for my lack of ability to give public speeches and all these other things. But I'll tell you what, where I get my energies from the people like you who are energized because there's a very valuable message. I've never backed off on the message because I think the message is the message we need. It's, mes it's the message that made America great, and there's no reason in the world that we should allow our system of government and our republic to be destroyed. We need to reverse things. We need to get rid of our empire and emphasize the American republic that would protect our <laughs> Southern governor, I can't remember his name, who's coming into, into the campaign. So he realizes that talking about the Fed is good too. But I'll tell you what, he makes me look like a moderate. I mean, I, I have never once said Bernanke has committed treason. But I have suggested very strongly that the Federal Reserve System and all their members have been counterfeiters for a long time. <laughs> And 
that, that is a pretty serious crime. The founders thought they should get the death penalty if you ever found a bit about money. And there aren't that many uh, national crimes put in our Constitution. You know, we have, uh, we have counterfeiting, and we have, uh, we have treason, and we have piracy, and we have slavery. But just think, there's, there's four major crimes that are national crimes. But wonder why we have 100,000 bureaucrats from Washington carrying guns telling us what to do with our lives and our property. That is what we have to reverse because it is out of hand, it is out of control, and I think the people know it. And I think this is the reason why this movement is growing. It's growing not only because the message is right, but out of necessity. For a long time, you know, as long as you could live off past wealth and borrowed money and printed money, people weren't too worried about the principles of where wealth comes from. But we're down now to that point. And it's not only us who are willing to take care of ourselves. Those who have been on the receiving end are getting worried too because they know there's something very, very bad about this deficit and there seems to be no control whatsoever. And it is our, our freedom message that has the answers. It's the free market that has the answers. It's our constitution that has the answers. It's sound money. So it's, it's all there, and we don't have to invent it. All we have to do is convince people that it, it is the answer. And uh, we cannot forget that uh, the economic system is very important, dealing with gold and the spending, the entitlement system. But there is one thing for sure, if we want to return prosperity and jobs to this country and get our budget under control, we must change our foreign policy. We must bring our yeah. We're getting more and more support from the veterans and active duty personnel. I didn't get to mention it. Maybe I should have taken the opportunity over the, you know, when I was in uh, Ames. But I do mention as much as I can, and I think you all know it. But the fundraising for our campaign from members of the military, we exceed all the others put together. That is a powerful message. recognize uh, exactly what happened there. I think the people are recognizing it and we may have ended up getting more attention the way they handled it. But, uh, it, you know, we were essentially tied for first place. It did prove that we have a good campaign staff. Uh, we were able to raise the money. We had the volunteers and we had the energy. But I'll tell you what, it looks like this energy has spread to New Hampshire. <laughs> absolutely convinced the need for our message. I'm absolutely convinced our message is correct economically and on foreign policy and monetary policy, personal liberties. I mean, what other candidate in the Republican Party is talking about personal liberty? Why, why are Republicans and conservatives not supposed to talk about personal liberties? They may throw that term out there, but I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very specific about that. Your life is your own. The government ought to stay out of your life, and we don't need a patriot. <laughs> brought to the floor was uh, hardly any time to debate it and it was up on the floor an hour or two and, and it was and it was passed. It was called the Patriot Act. I was sitting beside another member and I had a chance to do a little review but obviously couldn't read it all. But a lot of that material was floating around for a long time. They were looking for the opportunity to pass a Patriot Act. So I said, do, do you know what's in this? You know there's some things here that look bad. Why are you voting for it? He said, How how can I go home to my people under these circumstances after 9-11 and tell them I didn't vote for the Patriot Act. And I said, well, why don't you go home and explain it to them? That's what you ought to do. <laughs> just, think, just thinking what it would have been like um, if they would have called it a resolution to repeal the Fourth Amendment. How many people would have voted for us?
And actually, it's pretty close to that. It really has undermined it. There's, uh, they pay lip service to the Fourth Amendment. And that was one of the things the revolution was fought about, is, is to have uh, our privacy. We have a society today where the secrecy of government is protected and your yes. privacies mean nothing. We need to reverse that. We need to know everything is happening with the government. Of course, our privacy has to be protected because that's in essence what liberty is all about, is, is privacy. Of course, there's one rule. You can have your privacy, you can have your life, you can make, take your life and be very productive, or you can be destructive, but you can't meddle in other people's lives or other people's property, and it works if we do it that way. There's been a lot of talk, of course, these last several months. Uh, they should have been talking about it for the last several decades, uh, like a few of us have, but on the deficit and the debt. The debt is the big bugaboo about the economy because if any one of us, or if we have a business that we're overly indebted, we don't have any more credit, and we're just barely paying the interest, you can't get growth. It's impossible to have growth until you do something about your debt. You either have to pay it off, spend less, get another job, sell off your assets, or whatever. And that is what our country has refused to do. We've been refusing to do that and make the corrections that the market demands ever since the Depression. The Depression actually lasted 17 years. And this one's going now on quite a few years, and Japan's in the doldrum because politically they don't want you to face up to the truth. And the truth is, our country is bankrupt. And we should admit it, and we should take care of the debt. I believe, and I worked for the goal of paying it off and working our way out of it. Conceivably and theoretically, you can do it, but it is really, really tough. They have no intention on paying it off, and they were going to pretend, well, we will never default on our debt. Like, we will always send them a check. Their plan is to default on the debt by destroying the currency, which destroys the middle class, and that is why this monetary issue is so vital. So the success of this campaign is very, very important. I think it is the test, the litmus test, in this modern day uh, argument for the restorations of our liberty. So there's a lot at stake. And of course, I am going to do everything I can do, conceivably, physically, and mentally, to promote our cause. But I do want you to know that I get my energy and my enthusiasm for people like you who believe this way. Because it is, every once in a while, I'll get in a crowd and they'll come up and they'll say, well, they'll have a question that's very detailed about free market banking. Are you going to have fractional reserves or will somebody be able to do something else? Well, this is the kind of questions I hope someday we're really resolving, you know, exactly <laughs> how you do it in the free market. But uh, th th this, is, um, this is our opportunity. I don't see it as the end of what's happening, but I also know that if we're not successful, it's not going to be very good. Uh, I think the movement has to continue. We have to continue to improve what we're doing. And with the success, there is hope that we're going to achieve this. And, you know, we got in this mess by not following the Constitution. Why shouldn't we just only send individuals to Washington that know and understand, can read it, and only send those who believe in following the Constitution? <laughs> So it is said that, it has been said that an idea whose time has come, you can't stop it with bullets or anything else. And our ideas and our beliefs in, in, in freedom, our time has come. We've had a taste of it. Our country's had a taste of it. We had it for a long time. We've been, we have had it eroded now for nearly 100 years. So we're at the point now where we're not producing. The jobs are gone. The money is eroded. The foundations are gone. But we know what built the country, we know what freedom is all about, and that is but what's been revived. 
And with our effort, you know, I will take the interviews I get. If they call me up next week and they give me five interviews on Sunday morning, I'm going to do it. But you know what? In this day and age, they're not as relevant as they think they are. <laughs> We have the enthusiasm, we have the rightness of our cause, and we have that other little gadget called the internet for spreading out. So, I want to close by just once again thanking everybody for coming out and thanking you for encouraging me because, and, and expressing your belief and conviction that we're on the right track and freedom is far better than tyranny and that's what I vote for. Thank you. saw the line uh, it would take a very long time and I don't think he has that much time to answer questions but Ron Paul you saw him speak he covered pretty much all the major points of the campaign again this is the opening of the New Hampshire campaign headquarters so really the presentation tonight targeted towards people who are already familiar with the message but he hit the major points and the ones that appeal to most people that would be monetary policy, i.e. ending the Federal Reserve and returning to constitutional money. He also hit foreign policy, which is huge in terms of balancing budgets, bringing deficits and debt under control, and just having a more sane and just foreign policy. And then just the overall message of freedom, both personal and economic freedom, in terms of being able to control your own life, in terms of your personal choices, lifestyle choices, and the thing that goes with that, money. So, Ron Paul hitting the major points, this is much bigger than it was last time around. And I'm not just saying that to make it sound good. I don't, it was, I don't know how to compare it because the last campaign office that opened in the 2008 campaign, this event was held inside. There's no way you could fit half these people inside the building. Maybe 100, 150 people showed up last time at most. Um, and we've been trying to estimate here um, a rough count at a minimum 300 people. And I don't think it's overly optimistic to say that there were 500 in attendance. Uh, not everybody queued up in the line, so uh, it's almost a first. Not everybody's going to get a chance to ask a question, and that includes us. But that's a good sign for the campaign and for liberty. That's going to do it. <laughs>